Welcome back to the television show, now with more episodes aired than Selfie. Don't be jelly! Today, I want to take a look at AMC, who has become an industry juggernaut over the past several years. AMC was founded in 1920 and has grown into the second largest theater chain in... Uh, excuse me? The television channel. You mean the people that show Casablanca on loop? What, what have they done recently? Oh. Oh! Well then, I guess there is something of value here. Goddamn right. So, how did AMC evolve from the channel that shows black and white movies on shuffle mode to one of the industry leaders in scripted drama? Let's dig in. The American Movie Classics channel was founded in 1984 and was initially a commercial free premium channel along the lines of HBO and Showtime before becoming a basic cable station in 1987. In its early days, the station broadcasted movies mostly made prior to 1950. During the 90s, American Movie Classics started presenting major studio films in addition to the more artsy silent films from decades past. In 1998, the station started allowing commercials between movies and in 2001 became fully ad-supported. It was in the early 2000s when American Movie Classics learned two ugly truths about the industry. First, advertisers love young viewers. Second, young viewers don't like old movies. Thus, change was needed at the network. In 2003, American Movie Classics was relaunched as AMC. Noreen Laughlin, AMC's general manager at the time, said this on the matter. While we are still a movie channel, we've expanded and rebranded to refresh the network and to attract a growing and younger audience. The station doubled the amount of commercials per hour from 4 minutes to 8 minutes, and while they received criticism from their more loyal fans, AMC was still showing less advertisements per hour than their competitors, who aired 12 minutes instead of 8. Come on, Shia, talk to me, please. I'm, I support you, I'm here to help. Well... Yeah? Like we had... I had these really magnificent memories in my childhood. Tell me. Because um, we had these magnificent playgrounds. Yeah, spending time outside is healthy. Um, it was like these big watermelons. I'm sorry, watermelons? Um, I remember I used to climb to the top. Of, of the playground? Of the watermelon. Of the... And I'd rub myself on the ridges. Uh, what? To give myself pleasure, you know? Uh, Shia, get out of here, please. Okay, let's just move back on with AMC. Meanwhile, on an entirely different part of television, The Sopranos was concluding its run on HBO. Airing from 1999 to 2007, the crime drama was considered to be one of the greatest programs on HBO and television in general. One of the writers for The Sopranos, Matthew Weiner, wrote an important spec script in 2000. The spec script was about the American advertising industry in the 1960s. After realizing he had something notable on his hands, Weiner pitched his project to both HBO and Showtime, neither of whom picked it up. Weiner sat on the concept for a few more years until it was pitched to AMC. On August 10, 2006, Mad Men was announced as AMC's first scripted drama and with a price tag of $2.5 million an episode, the pilot being $3 million itself. It was a risky venture for AMC, but at the same time made a statement about their future aspirations for the station. AMC Network's president at the time, Ed Carroll, said, We took a bet that quality would win out over formulaic mass appeal. Mad Men debuted to instant critical acclaim, winning a Peabody and Golden Globe for Best Drama after its first season, and the reviews would only get better from there on. The show's viewership started small, but grew as word of the show's quality spread. Its first season viewership average of 900,000 viewers per episode doubled to 1.8 million viewers per episode in its third season, and climbed to 2.6 million viewers in its fifth. So right now, you're probably wondering, am I holding a cat? Well, the answer's no. I'm holding a different cat. Before Mad Men even aired its first episode, AMC was hard at work on their second original drama, the show that would solidify their position as a major player in television programming. In February of 2006, AMC began production on Breaking Bad, a new show from Vince Gilligan, a writer of The X-Files, and Brian Cranston, the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. The show encountered trouble before it even started to air, as the first season was cut from 9 episodes to 7 thanks to the 2007 writer's strike. Just like Mad Men, Breaking Bad was an instant critical success, and the reviews improved from stellar to whatever is greater than stellar over the rest of its lifespan. Along with Mad Men, it is considered to be one of the greatest television series ever made, and I personally agree. In the show's first four years, it only earned more than 2 million viewers on one occasion, its fourth season premiere. 
Season 5A, the episodes airing in 2012, averaged between 2.2 and 3 million viewers per episode. Season 5B in 2013 saw a staggering increase for the show, with most episodes falling in the 5 to 6 million viewer range and the series finale registering 10.3 million viewers. Breaking Bad concluded with 16 Emmy Awards among countless other accolades and lives on today through its spin-off Better Call Saul. Now firmly established as a force in television, AMC added the slogan, Story Matters Here in 2009, and the following year, they debuted the adaptation of The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead was an instant commercial success for the network, averaging 5.4 million viewers per episode across its first season. Over the past couple years, that number has grown to astronomical heights, with the previous season, number 5, averaging over 14 million viewers an episode. However, in my eyes, The Walking Dead's rise to prominence is less interesting than the troubles that unfolded along the way. The Walking Dead television show was the brainchild of Frank Darabont, best known for directing The Shawshank Redemption in 1994. In December of 2010, after the first season of The Walking Dead had concluded, Darabont fired all the other writers on the show, a report that was immediately combated by various members of the show's crew, but not outright denied. It was clear that something strange was happening behind the scenes. In July of 2011, during the middle of production on the show's second season, Darabont stepped down from running the show, although it was later revealed he was fired. This started a revolving door of showrunners for The Walking Dead. Now this happened three days after a friendly Comic-Con panel for the show, indicating his departure developed as quickly as Sepp Blatter's departure from FIFA the weekend after he was re-elected. And by the way, I'm still happy dancing over that. It was revealed by the press that Darabont was fired after fighting network executives on the creative direction of the show. In particular, AMC wanted to noticeably slash the show's budget, despite it being a huge success. For the record, the apparent need for budget cuts at AMC is rumored to be because of their heavy investment in Mad Men. Darabont was replaced by Glenn Mazzara, who would in turn be replaced by Scott Gimple after Season 3. This amount of showrunner turnover for a highly successful show is rare in television. So now that we've taken a look at AMC's rise to power and some of the troubles along the way, I want to point out two key executives from AMC that allowed this to happen. I'm talking about Rob Sorcher and Christina Wayne. Sorcher is a longtime television executive who was a vice president of AMC from 2002, just before their revamp from the American Movie Channel to AMC, until the summer of 2007. In 2005, he became responsible for the station's original programming and scheduling, putting him in charge of developing scripted dramas for the station. At this time, he hired Wayne to head scripted programming for the network. Wayne was the one who discovered Matthew Weiner's spec script for Mad Men years after HBO and Showtime declined to produce the show. Wayne brought the project to Sorcher, who started his career as an advertising copywriter at the firm of Benton and Bowles. Weiner was brought in to make a formal pitch, and Sorcher and Wayne secured their first show. Vince Gilligan, whose pitch for Breaking Bad had been passed on by HBO, FX, and several other networks, had a successful pitch meeting with Wayne for his drama, after which the script was given to Sorcher, who wasn't initially interested. In Sorcher's own words, I didn't want to read the f***ing script about the meth dealer with cancer. He waited two weeks for digging into the script, at which point he came to the conclusion that this is f***ing great. Sorcher and Wayne's success in landing Mad Men and Breaking Bad as AMC's first original dramas went a long way in securing the station's future. Neither of them are still with AMC. Sorcher is currently an executive vice president at Cartoon Network, and Wayne formed her own production company, Assembly Entertainment. So that about covers AMC's rise to power, the key figures involved, and some of the troubles they encountered along the way. No, Shia. Double. I don't want to hear it, Shia. Double-sided. Ah, mute. I'm putting you on mute. It's driving me crazy! Ah. Oh, okay. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please comment below. Uh, I'll definitely respond to everyone. Please subscribe to my channel uh, to get my latest videos. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more here on TV Junkie.